really hope you like this video. Just subscribe, like, and click the bell to be notified of more content just like this. Hey! Morning, Charlie. Hello. Morning, John. Morning, guys. Right. Oh, God. You, how, how is it? Let me ask. How well, is the Wi-Fi? Well, it was fine yesterday, but you never know. It could be gremlins. Yeah. But it seems fine, mate. Uh, I, as long as you and John can hear me. Let's I can hear you. Let's crack on. Right, okay, let's let's crack on. Morning, everybody. John Richardson and Charlie McCann. Charlie's in Gibraltar. John Richardson's on the moon somewhere. We don't really know where Rico exists this this week. He's um, I guess you made a splash, didn't didn't you? With you, you've been talking about. It. If anybody's been watching our show for the last six months, you you, you put in the, uh, the your story in the Sunday Mirror is is clock going and and Stevie G in. Well, um, along those lines, yeah, what well, kind of reaction have you had? I, I thought I'd better uh, put it out there because we've been talking about it, haven't we, for the, the last few weeks. I might <laughs> get it in the paper, uh, I, you know, scoop myself. Uh, no, it, it, it's basically from inside information talking to somebody you know very well, actually, Rob, um, somebody connected with Liverpool. And um, I just ran it past him. I said, No, there's all this talk about Jurgen Klopp possibly be ne next German manager when Joachim Lowe eventually goes. That could be after the end of these Euros or maybe the end of the, the World Cup next year in Qatar. And, um, you know, I've heard that um, already the the owners are looking at Steven Gerrard as the obvious replacement. And uh, this guy knows what's going on in Liverpool, so true and true. So I thought I'd better run it. But then, of course, we live in this social media world where everybody's an expert. So, you know, the, the story appears on Sunday morning and on Sunday, you know, you just get abuse, you know, on social media. Now, I'm on Twitter because it, it does raise your profile, but I'm not a lover of it. And um, I feel for people are abused. You know, we have racism, blah, blah, blah. It's, I'm afraid it's, it's getting worse and worse. And, you know, no... Nobody can come and have a sensible conversation. It, it's always got to be abusive. And of course, they know better than you, even though you're in the business of talking to people. They don't know anybody, but they seem to know better. But that's, that's the world we live in, I'm afraid. Um, somebody who knows everything, especially about his beloved blues. They've had a, they've had a good week, haven't they, Charlie? Very good. Klopp is 15-2 to two to be the next uh, Premier League manager to lose or to leave his post. But that is only until the end. The Chelsea game, I think they've run out of excuses, etc. They the players don't have the same energy that they had. Maybe the manager as well doesn't quite have the same energy. And I'm sorry, he, there, there is an awful lot of logic to what John suggests. He's always said he wants to manage his national side one day. I'm, I'm sorry to you know, bring up maybe what happened to his. Was his mother, sorry, his relative, um, um, that might act as a catalyst as well, and he might decide. Rico, it's, 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 it's genuinely astonishing. I mean, I, I was watching last night, and he just, you, it's, it's almost so predictable what's going to happen, as in nothing's going to happen for Liverpool. It is, okay. it is almost like they, they look like they, they, they've run out of everything, confidence, energy, ideas. I mean, let's, let's get this right, because, you know, all of us have praised them over the last couple of years, and quite rightly so. Well, over the last three years, they've been a, a tremendous side. But make no bones about this. This is an appalling defence of a of championship. It, it's probably one of the worst in, in modern times. You know, the white flag of surrender's gone up. Um, watching last night, you just knew that they weren't going to get anything from it. You know, they, it, as Charlie said, there was a lack of energy. They were flat. Uh, there's a lack of confidence, obviously. Um, and, it, you know, people say, oh, Virgil van Dijk, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that's part of it. You know, they've had 19 central defensive partnerships, but it's more than that. I mean, the front three, who have been supreme over the last three years, you know, they're struggling. It's, it's, it's like um, a Rolls Royce, which is misfiring. You know, there's, there's, there's nothing happening and the midfield isn't as, as, as dominant as it has been. They're going through a bad time, and and Charlie, you know, mentioned Jurgen Klopp. He looks, he looks like he's absolutely shattered as well. Um, 
I've said before on this program, I don't think all is well behind the scenes as far as uh, you know the, the owners and Klopp is concerned. I don't think it's a crisis point, but he obviously wasn't backed how he wanted to be in the January transfer window. And there's just one or two signs that the, the whole empire is, is starting to crack. And um, yes, we have rightly praised them over the last few years, and you, you never take that away from them. But I think Graham Soon has, has said quite often, the mark of, of great champions is, is how you, you keep going, how you defend that title, because obviously you're there to be um, shot at. You know, you are the champions, and it, it, it's how you re re react to that. Because if you, if you look at the Premier League over the last few years, it is very hard to retain the title. But, um, you know, most sides have, have come a lot better than... You know, done a lot better than Liverpool. So, yeah, I mean, questions have got to be asked. Uh, it's an absolutely fantastic, and I mean fantastic, title race, apart from Manchester City, Charlie. Yeah, it is. It, and, and that top four, um, which, you, you know, if, if you'd have told me that Liverpool would be even money to finish in the top four, yeah, I still insist they could win the, um, the, the Champions League. But Manchester United, you know what? They were so, they've been so, so ordinary recently, you know, and this much, much vaunted Bruno Fernandes. And uh, what Gary Neville, you know, he must have, Edison Cavani must have pictures of Gary Neville with farmyard animals because he absolutely adores him. And he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. And yet, you know, he scored three goals, you know, and... and uh, well, well, anyway, United are five, uh, four to one on Chelsea. I thought was sensate. I thought they were really good. And whatever you say, you know, and everyone's loyal to Frank, A, because he's a good bloke, and B, because he's a Chelsea legend. That took some balls to get rid of him at that time. And it was the correct decision. And this guy, the, the, these guys, you know, people like, you know, Rudiger, whether he was one of the, again, one of the catalysts for change and whether he was, you know, but... You know, maybe he, he 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 and Tuchel were were you know and the, there's rumours that he was he was you know not particularly well he wasn't in in favour of Lampard and so you know um, but he's been absolutely symbolic of the the Renaissance in Chelsea very good and again I've been sort of not critical Mason Mount I thought was a good player very good player. But I didn't think he was. I thought that the, 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 the London press maybe. No, he's been fantastic. That was a top class goal. You go to Anfield and you score. Yeah, did Bruno Fernandes do that? Nah. Mason Mount did. And that, I think it's great again for, for, for English football. And I hold my hand up. This, this guy, this guy's a real player, but that's a real Chelsea team as well. I like the fact that he could bring in Giroud and things like that. Werner, high line, he wants to play with pace. Had it been 4 0, no one could have complained. No one can complain. Uh, Rick, I've got it. It's, it's, it's VAR, and, and, and yeah. I mean, why, why was that not a handball last night against Angolo Conte? Only mm -hmm. from the context of the Fulham handball, which I mean, I know the rule if it, if, if it leads any kind of touch on the hand that leads to a, to a goal has to be short. I mean, it, it is, it's just cobblers, isn't it? It's, it's ridiculous. Football's got a major problem. You, you, I mean, last night, um, nobody, is, nobody celebrates the goal straight away, do they? It, it, you know, in the, in, in the past, you'd look towards the linesman, you know, and then you'd start celebrating. Now, there's this fear that it's going to be knocked off by VAR. And the problem for me is that I do think that the people at uh, Stockley Park are sitting there, sitting judgment, and I think... Instead of trying to goals, they're trying to knock them off. I think there's a negative view. I think they all. I mean, look at the look at that. Uh, the, the first Chelsea goal, well, the one that was disallowed with Werner. I mean, I still can't see how that was disallowed. As far as I was concerned, they were in a line, and so the benefit should go to the attacker. But I'm afraid it, it, it's 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 like a surgical um, procedure now. They sit in front of that and. I'm afraid that they're, they're, they're sucking the life out of the game. I mean, football is, is spontaneous. It's joy. It's, it's fantastic. Now you, you're getting sort of two half-hearted celebrations instead of one because you've got to wait for VAR. Now, 
I think we've got to have a look at this in the summer because it is, it, it's, it's record football. You know, we've got the machinery there and, you know, the goal line technology, fantastic. No problems with that. I don't think there's anything wrong with the actual, you know, technology. It's, it's the people in front of these screens, I think, have, you know, they're very negative. I, I've got to be honest, I know a lot of uh, colleagues went to Stockley Park and they, you know, they've had chats about how it works. I look at that screen, I, I don't understand it. I, I, I look at those lines and I don't, I don't know what I'm looking for. I don't know how you decide, unless their lines are better than the lines I see on TV, Charlie. I, I, I just don't, I don't get it. I thought Vernis was a perfectly good goal. I, I thought West Brom should have been, but the two penalty, the, sorry, the penalty for uh, N'Golo Conte was ridiculous. You know, his, you know, we were all told he's got to, his hand was there. That, that was a penalty. And the worst of the lot from only oh, midweek, I mean, we should have a sort of top 10 programme of VAR cock-ups almost every week. I mean, you're not talking about one or two or three, you could have a top 10. But the Fulham goal, and of course, Scott Parker was so magnanimous after that. I would, can imagine some managers would have been ranting and raving, and he just said, no, I know the law. Um, it doesn't mean to say that the law is not an ass. That was a perfectly good goal. You know when, when um, Spurs, Deli Alley was kicking off. Deli Alley was kicking off. And of course, that, that, that's handball, supposedly. Not offside, it's handball. And Deli Alley wanted to kick off and get continue the game. That shows how bonkers that rule is. And it's not good. Of course, it will, of course it will change because it's got to change because it's crackers. But it doesn't mean to say that, you know, if you're a Fulham football club and you're a Fulham supporter this morning or you're a Fulham player or you're Scott Parker, that was wrong. That was uh, wrong. And it, it ultimately... This ultimately, ultimately this, could, this, sorry, hasn't, this hasn't come out yet and it won't come out, right? I think you know, Rob, that Sky and BT do their own lines, you know. Stockley Park do their line, and BT and Sky, whose technology is supposed to be better than at Stockley Park, they do their lines over an offside, and they're completely different to the ones at Stockley Park. So They have to be. They have to be from what I say. Listen, I just, I just wonder if that's a, a decision that, that could cost Fulham their Premier League status in a way. Um, but... I was going to ask you, Rico. Steve Bruce has been they've been fighting with Matt Ritchie, hasn't he, in training? And what a weekend it is for them. And 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 with all the injuries, I I, I think Fulham. I've, I've said it all along. I think Fulham have got a right chance of getting out. Maybe at the expense of the two. Well, as you know, training incidents happen every week, and they're never reported. But when you're in trouble, obviously everything is magnified. So there was this bust up with uh, Matt Ritchie which has been reported, um, and it's, it's another stick to beat Steve Bruce with. Um, the local media, the northeast media, are dead set against Brucey. Um, they want him out. Um, and so this is, this is now a, a campaign. I'm not knocking the story. The story was, was, was true. But, you know, I can tell you lots of training ground incidents. They happen every week. You know, you have bust-ups in, in practice games, et cetera, et cetera, and it's not reported. It's just one of those work workplace um, incidents. But, yeah, he's up against it. Um, and it's not just because of that. It's because the injuries. I mean, they've got Almira out, San Maximo out. Of course, they've got Callum Wilson out. Um, where are the goals going to come from? They're struggling for goals anyway. Yeah, they're, they're in, in, in trouble. And this game against West Brom, is, is so important for them. But we've talked about it before. West Brom are capable of scoring goals and, and Newcastle at the moment aren't. This is the time now for the likes of Joe Linton. God forbid. Uh, Joe Linton and uh, Ryan Fraser to, to come to the party and also Dwight Gale. I feel a bit sorry for Dwight Gale. He's playing against the, the club he was on loan for. Uh, I think he is... Given the chance a, a natural goal scorer, unlike uh, the man who cost 40 million, there must be one of the worst signings in football history. Yeah, the, as you, they've got it all to do. Um, we spoke to Charlie when I, I touched on Everton, um, the, the, the Wi Fi was a little bit shaky. Um, <laughs> gr a great week for Everton and, and Richarlison and, and uh, able to win, way able to dig it out. Um, where, where, if you if if you were asked to say where they'll finish now, what what would you say? 
É isso. É isso. <risos> well, you've, you've, asked, you've asked me a question, so you, you, you're saying then they'll, they'll finish above Liverpool? Will they stay up, Charlie? Will, will, they, finish above, will they finish above Liverpool? Well, I'm asking you. Well, I'm telling you they won't. <laughs> I, I'm telling you they will not finish above Spurs. They probably won't finish above Arsenal. They may finish above West Ham, who are also in. You, you why, would you, why would you say that? Why would you say that? They've got a game in hand. They're in the form of their lives. They, they haven't got dramatic injuries. When, when, you say they're in the, when you say they're in the form of their no, lives, it's not did you see the game against Southampton? Did you see yeah, the game? Yeah, but Charlie, Charlie, they, they've got an ability now when the likes of Leicester are so. I mean, a lot of it is injury based, but you know, Leicester have hit the buffers. Um, yeah. You know, Manchester United are. Um, they're playing a derby at the weekend. I know you've got Chelsea. Why, why wouldn't you be more bullish about Everton? Well, be, because I don't think they are as good as as people suggest. You know, um, Alan now reminds me of Reedy when Reedy was getting on. Um, you know, Decore has been a sensational signing. But these are largely, with Hammers playing one game or one game on, three games off now, you know, these are largely the same players who struggled last year. Um, the manager is fantastic. The, the, the signing, and, you know, this is, you know, obviously I've been going on, is, is Godfrey. Godfrey's made such a difference because not only has he he's got pace, whereas Michael Keane's also a great header of ball and defender, he's absolutely brilliant. Um he is hopefully going to captain Everton for a long time and maybe even, I know it sounds daft, maybe captain uh, England uh, at some stage. But uh, honestly, Rob, we'll see how, how good we are. I, Southampton deserved a, a, a draw. West Brom deserved a draw. At the moment, we are having... If you, if you have a, a, a goal difference of plus five or plus six, that's probably a good barometer as to how good you are, in my opinion. We have... You know, if you lose twice to Newcastle United are you that good I mean it, it, you asked me a question I think we'll finish eighth we'll see at the end of the season I know it, it's fantastic and they've, they've more importantly we've beaten Liverpool at Anfield and we put that to bed but if we got into Europe and not forget the Champions League Everton are five to one to you know that's what the bookmakers think of Everton's chances it's the same as around West Ham do you think West Ham will finish in the Champions League because I don't uh, Rico, um, you were always saying that headline or your, your editors want black or white from you. Uh, Gareth Bale was the worst footballer in the world three weeks ago, and now he's the best. <laughs> exactly. Um, I'm just glad he's playing and uh, he can show he is. He's, he's a world-class player, you know, on form. And, at, well, at last, they're playing the, the front four, if you like, of, uh, you know, Harry Kane, Son, Bale and Deli Alley. Deli Alley's suddenly come into it and played very well the other, the other night. So, at last, I think Jose Mourinho is getting the message that he has got a, a fantastic front four if he wants to play them. And then, if he if he lets them sort of co cause carnage, then, you know, he, he can back them up then with his pragmatic central defenders and, you know, midfield players. So, I, I think Jose has at last smelled the coffee and thought, yeah, we, we can attack because that is their strength. But I'm afraid they've sort of been in a straitjacket over, you know, many weeks. Um, I'm going to talk a, a little bit about a couple of other sports in a minute, but just a last word uh, on, the, on the football for the time being. Um, Mick McCarthy, the job he's done at Garden, yeah. is just... It's just, I don't know how that's happened. That's the most astonishing run I can ever think. And talk about a good time to change your manager. I mean, I like Neil Harris a lot, but I, I don't know if you've been following what Cardiff have been yeah, doing. Yeah. It's okay. ridiculous. Well, Mick McCarthy's proven, isn't he? Um, what I couldn't understand, he's did a great job at Ipswich Town and the, the fans wanted him out. Look what's happened to Ipswich since. And um, mm. to be fair... You know, I was watch. Uh, I, I I do um, sort of cover the Welsh side of things, and I, I know the Cardiff fans weren't happy about Mick McCarthy coming in. Now, now he's got a new contract that you know the that they're uh, celebrating a, a fantastic revival, and now you know along with Swansea, they've they've got a chance of finishing in the promotion playoffs. So hats hats off, 
Nick, Charlie, I've, Charlie, I've got to ask you because this is a story that's dominated. It's it's dominated the headlines every time I look, and it, it's it's a, a horse racing trainer called Gordon Elliott, who was pictured sitting on a a dead horse. Now, I, I have a, a, a an interest in racing, but it's only a passing interest. But the, the, the racing industry with Cheltenham on the horizon seems to have turned itself upside down. Can you shed any light, or have you got a view on 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 well, the whole story, really. Um, it was an abhorrent uh, image. It was an appalling, um, crass error of judgment. It was, I don't know what, you, you, you can't get your head around, you know, the, what he was thinking of by this. I was, you know, you absolutely, absolutely appalled by it. Um, I think his, his uh, apology is genuine. He was... Back in 2017, I, I, as soon as I saw the picture, I said, he's got more chins than that. That was taken a couple of years ago. Um, absolutely appalling. He will get suspended today. Um, for how long, I don't know. I think the IRHB, the British Horse Rating Authority, have already said he's going to lose his livelihood, at least in the short term. All those horses, the great horses he's got, they're all going to uh, be taken away from him. And he's, his uh, rise in the last, you know, he's won Grand Nationals, he's won Gold Cups. He's not a good trainer. He is a fantastic trainer. And I, um, I, I, from, from, I, I hear what you're saying, just from, just from an outsider's point. I mean, I mean I, when I see these idiots with their standing over lions and all this kind of thing that they, they've shot and all that, I just, it just makes me sick. But, and I, I I know it's a terrible picture. I know it's a terrible image. And I'm, I'm sure there's no one more upset than him himself. I just wonder then, you know, that the ramifications if he's suspended that possibly 80 staff could lose their jobs. I, 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 I just play devil's advocate. I, it's not so much that punishment fits the crime because he has to be punished in some way. I, I, I just don't know whether this is a, a, another social media where everybody jumps on and hammers him and, you know, I'm not saying we've all made mistakes, so hopefully not like that. Do you understand what I'm saying? I just, I just. No. Absolutely. The first thing I said, you know, let ears without sin cast the first stone. This is, this is appalling. Absolutely appalling. Yes. But he didn't, he didn't shoot the horse. You know, it, let's get it right. The horse died, unfortunately, in the gallops. He, it's something that he will have to take to his grave. He will have to take why he did it. You know, what, I, I, it, it beggars belief. But please, you know, um, um, I, I just worry about, and as you say, this, the staff as well, uh, that is a concern, a real concern uh, for their livelihood. Um, he's going to get sanctions. The IRHB are meeting as we, as we speak, and it will be announced. I would imagine he will get a 12-month ban. Um, that would be my, my, my thoughts. And, of course, all those horses that he's built up, the Cheveley Park horses, um, they will all go, and you would imagine um, or those 80 staff will lose their jobs. Well, we'll see how that um, uh, transpires and see what happens. Rico, just to finish with, um, I saw a tweet talking of social media, a Rico's rant tweet saying, you owe Kenny Dalglish a house on the week of his 70th birthday. What's all that about? I, I did say I wouldn't uh, tell anybody what happened, uh, as you know. Um, but I'll tell you, well, between us, nobody else is listening. <laughs> Nobody's watching. Don't worry. We won't tell anyone. <laughs> right. It was um, Kenny at the time was manager of Newcastle. And now I have a you know really good relationship with him. At the time, I didn't because he'd replaced uh, Kevin Keegan and fairly unfairly used to criticise the uh, style of football. I remember they, um, they lost at Sheffield Wednesday. They lost at Sheffield Wednesday 2-0 and they played awfully. And my intro was Owls 2, Pussycats 0. Which Kenny Very good. Didn't, <laughs> Kenny didn't uh, like, obviously. Anyway, it, it was at one press conference and he announced that Alan Shearer uh, would be out for uh, six or seven weeks because he, he, he'd done his cartilage or, or something. And uh, somebody had told me at, within the club, oh, no, Kenny's exaggerating. It'll only be two or three weeks. So... I, I just said to him in this press conference, I said, um, you sure it's not going to be two or three weeks? Ah, no, no, he says, uh, it's going to be six or seven weeks. I said, well, I've, I've been told it's... it's right, he said, I'll bet you my hoose against your hoose. 
<laughs> anyway, he was <laughs> for seven weeks. So after that, it was where's Mahus? Even, <laughs> even though you, you turn up at Anfield, you know, when you could, and uh, Kenny would be at the top of the stairs there, you know, in the old stand. And he see, see me, Rico, he says, where's Mahus? <laughs> And this has carried on forever and ever. So I, I do owe him a house. <laughs> oh, only, there are only two people I have been uh, completely in awe when I've met them and got to know them a little bit. And he's one of them. Yeah, one me of too. Them. And I, 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 I remember going to a, a meeting at nine o'clock in the morning and he turned up um, in his suit, but it was around his tie. And... Um, Anyway, he said he would ring me, and I got back to the office, and I and it was something like I was a blackadder, and I went, "Is the phone on the hook? Is the phone on the hook?" And I said, "My new best mate's going to ring me, Kenny," and he rang me, and honestly, I couldn't speak. <laughs> I was just Kenny. <laughs> honestly, I was I was completely completely yeah. starstruck. For, for somebody, you know, he wasn't, he, he was that good. And it was something to do with him and, and Marina's charity as well, his wife's uh, uh, yeah. charity as well. Just, just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. But a fantastic sense of humour as well. But, but somebody, to, to me, it was, oh, turn to, turn to a pussycat, John. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, uh, Charlie, thanks a lot. Great stuff. Rico, thanks a lot. And uh, we'll do it all again next week. Have a great week, lads. And, and you. See you guys. Bye, See you, bye now. Thank you.